Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, an integration technical architect. So I am happy to start this integration design pattern series as committed. And uh, we are uh, starting from uh, today and we will be releasing uh, uh, one video each day. So uh, we will be taking up uh, critical integration design patterns uh, uh, one by one. So uh, I initially created a poll where uh, uh, many members uh, recommended to take it up uh, message sequence first. Uh, so as requested, I'm starting with the message sequence. So let's get started. So the message sequence uh, is one of the complex and interesting uh, design patterns. And uh, uh, so as you know, integration design patterns are uh, uh, designed uh, for uh, uh, addressing the specific set of problems. We are going to see uh, what problem we have and what uh, how we are going to address that and how this uh, uh, integration design pattern suggests the idea on doing this message, message sequence. So uh, before that, I would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, uh, there are two different ways in which you can interpret message sequencing. So uh, there is uh, one, this message sequence, and there is other one that is a resequencer where uh, we will be sending multiple messages uh, uh, to the channel, either it's uh, a JMS or database or some by, uh, by any means. And then, we, uh, I mean, uh, this messaging pattern resequencer addresses how to take them and then reordering them into the proper sequence. So this is uh, the one that we are going to see next. And uh, now we are going to see the actual message sequence. Now let's see what problem message sequence uh, uh, tries to address and how. So before that, let's see uh, uh, this slide. So where we have a problem statement and a solution, I'll try to explain in a simple way. So uh, the problem is uh, there are two applications, uh, uh, application A and application B. And we are in application A and we are developing an API. And uh, uh, so we have to send the message to application B. But uh, application B is incapable of receiving such a huge size message um, due to some reasons. So we will not be digging into uh, designing how this uh, problem has come into existence. We don't care. But uh, we have a problem that application B, I mean, the recipient cannot receive the uh, message in huge size. So that's the problem. So um, the solution is how we are going to address is uh, application A breaks down the huge uh, huge message in parts like we are going to break down uh, uh, syntactically and logically into different parts and we will be sending uh, uh, the message with the necessary details and in a suitable structure uh, such that uh, the recipient can receive them in parts and they can reconstruct the final message in full so that's the idea here so, it's, I mean, you would have seen uh, in a bank statement when you log in, uh, when there are multiple uh, details to show, and they show uh, 10 uh, transactions at a time where you have to click to the next page to see the successive one. So, we can't see all the 200 uh, uh, transactions in one screen. Similarly, when there are, uh, uh, say, uh, in an order processing system, uh, there are uh, uh, thousands of orders sent in one message, and uh, you cannot send them as is, so you need to develop an API to get that and send it to the uh, destination uh, system, but not in full, but you have to reconstruct them in parts and send them so that uh, the end system can receive them in parts and then after receiving, they can reconstruct the messages back. So the, the problem is only in sending the message in full. Let's get started. So here, the design pattern suggests us to achieve this in some specific way. We can do it in our own style, but it's often recommended to follow the uh, design recommended so that you don't need to deviate and then end up in trouble. So this suggests uh, uh, to send the message in sequence and um, uh, the, the pattern suggests uh, uh, some methodology. Let's see what they are. So when there is a huge message, uh, you need to split it up and then send it but uh, uh, you need to do it carefully and then send with the necessary details so that uh, the end system can use those details and metadata to reconstruct them in full in certain order and then you need to know how to uh, join them back 
so because uh, anyway you are going to split them and then send it uh, uh, arbitrarily because uh, uh, you cannot guarantee the order although you are sending it via queues or in some way uh, so how what is it uh, suggested here so you need to have a, um, a sequence id which is often called as a correlation id so that uh, you know all these uh, messages that are uh, uh, sent in loose they are all related messages so in order to relate them together you need a correlation id that's what is the sequence number and uh, you need to uh, after breaking down into pieces uh, you need to say which which message comes in which position because order is extremely important here so we are going to have a field called position and after splitting we are going to uh, have them in certain order uh, but uh, form the uh, position in order and then you can send it in a different order because in a load balanced environment uh, when you send it into the vmq or jms uh, you don't know in which order uh, the queues are going to receive them and then send it back uh, so uh, you need to designate the position here and you need to say which size because how many uh, you, you need to understand whether we have received them all uh, or not because uh, at the time of sending each messages one by one uh, you cannot reconstruct them because uh, you haven't received uh, uh, all the messages yet so you need to know the size so that decides uh, uh, how many parts are received before they are uh, joining them together and then message body so after splitting you need to have that actual uh, body content which are split uh, so these are this is a the basic idea on a recommendation of how uh, this message sequence can be achieved now let's jump into the demo so uh, we are going to take up a message and not so long for the demo purpose we are going to take a, a reasonable uh, json uh, where we will be uh, uh, applying this integration pattern where we will be splitting this message into multiple uh, messages in sequence and we are going to achieve that so this is the json i have taken where i have employees and it contains an array uh, which uh, which in turn contains uh, multiple employees so this is the use case so there are uh, two ways in which you can achieve so number one we are going to uh, achieve it syntactically so we are going to literally break down this json into strings of characters uh, with multiple um, part uh, so that is one thing and uh, second way is to achieve logically for example uh, we have a certain say n number of employees and we are going to split them into uh, parts like for example first message contains the first two employees and second contains the second two employees and the third one contains uh, last set of employees so we can either do it syntactically and logically so we are going to see uh, both methods so uh, the objective of this video is not to achieve this particular design pattern so while in the process of uh, achieving this design pattern there are uh, so many learnings uh, that we can gain uh, by doing this uh, poc or you can do it literally hands-on uh, uh, component by component so you can uh, learn tons of things uh, in the process of learning so that's the idea so let's get into the demo now so i have created a mule 4 flow with a http listener and the transformation as usual so the best way to start the project is to get the payload and implement the framework and then uh, return the payload as is so that uh, you ensure everything is working fine and then you start the development so I have already created uh, this uh, both uh, use cases, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, instead of going through these uh, uh, components one by one, uh, um, uh, some friends requested me to do the actual coding uh, while I am creating a video so that they can follow uh, step by step. But um, uh, what I thought was it, it should take uh, a lot of time when we do one by one. I think it's going to take... Uh, 30 to 40 minutes video so please uh, be patient and pardon, pardon me uh, so that I'm, I'm going to do it uh, component by component so i'll be referring this one in case uh, we are stuck so uh, we have this uh, message sequencing and uh, uh, let's copy this uh, input uh, payload let's copy this and then we will put it here and this is our payload and uh, we are invoking and what did we do so let 
let's copy this. So we missed out the comma and uh, paste it here. So, so here is the JSON. So whatever uh, payload input given, it came out as a response. So now uh, let's uh, start with this. So I have created a, I mean, in order to do this first uh, method, so we have uh, created a, a Java class. So let me explain what this Java class does. So this Java class uh, literally splits this uh, uh, a string uh, in given size. Uh, so, I mean, we will see both methods. So whatever JSON uh, given as an input, uh, we are going to literally uh, break it into uh, four characters each. Um, so let's run this. I mean, I have given uh, public static void main to demo this particular Java uh, program alone. So let's run this. So we are doing a simple method. I will uh, attach this Java in the in the description below so you can refer it uh, instantly. So what it does is we are giving the message and the size. So the message is split in the given size equally and then uh, gives the list of uh, uh, the string that are split. So we have a for loop to iterate through one by one. Uh, so we are uh, doing the substring um, from beginning till end uh, uh, in a sequence manner. So let's run this and then see uh, how it works. So you can see here I have given some um, string um, to split equally split with four characters each. So it's split this way. So this is the way we are going to do. So whatever uh, payload we have given, we are going to split uh, uh, equally. So uh, no matter what, uh, whether the individually split uh, message makes a meaningful JSON or not, we don't care because we're literally going to split and send it and uh, it can be used only upon uh, receiving all the message, put them together and then it makes meaning. So let's start with this. So now what we need to do is here, uh, we need to uh, uh, introduce because uh, this uh, Java class is uh, a static method. So you can directly use uh, uh, invoking that uh, here. So let me copy it from this. So I have given here. And uh, so first we are going to convert that uh, given uh, payload into string. So we have seen write method uh, uh, helps to achieve that given JSON as a string. So let's do that. And uh, let's go back. And here we are going to give uh, this. So um, it literally converts that uh, given payload into string. Uh, that's what uh, we are doing here. And let's verify this particular uh, step. Let's save it. Let's try to run this. So this is uh, uh, the content uh, uh, converted into string. So as a next step, uh, we are going to make this string uh, split into equal length. So let's see how to do that. So I'm going to introduce another uh, transformation here. And uh, we are going to utilize the string util Java class that we have uh, written. So let's uh, use this uh, JSON. Let's import uh, Java. So we have seen in the previously published videos uh, that we need to use a fully qualified uh, class name uh, and use colon colon instead of dot. So we are using that string util. And this is the class that we have imported and we, let's use that. So now we are going to display the messages uh, and uh, we are going to use uh, string util class and under which we have a split equally method where we can use uh, the payload that we have converted into string and uh, the equal length of 100 we can do that so let's see 
let's see. And payload. I think let's ignore this error for now. And let's see what's the output. So now uh, the JSON is displayed where uh, it's uh, split into equal length. And after uh, converting into string, it shows uh, the encoded JSON. Let's not worry about this for now. And uh, so we have seen here uh, uh, in our uh, uh, integration pattern that it has to be split and it has to be provided with uh, necessary messages like uh, it needs to have a correlation ID, it needs to have a position and it's, it needs to have a size so that uh, whether we received all the messages or not. So let's do that. Sequence, position and size. So we are going to iterate it now here by using map and uh, data comma position. And uh, let's see, so first we need to have a sequence. So instead of that, we can have a correlation ID. So correlation ID is the correlation ID itself. So if you are confused, we can use uh, uh, message uh, ID. So, so the correlation ID is a predefined variable that brings in the message ID, which we can use it as a correlation ID. And then position. So position, we can use this uh, uh, position itself, which we are uh, using here. And uh, next, we need to have a size. So we need to know uh, uh, so how many parts we are going to display. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, how many parts we are going to send. So that size will be uh, the size of uh, uh, the split maybe we can use this as a uh, variable here we can cut this off we can use where uh, uh, split strings equal to this one so we can use uh, uh, split strings so now we can use the size of uh, uh, split strings so let's uh, save this and run it so now you can see uh, we have followed the design pattern properly where the design pattern suggests uh, that we need to have a set of messages formed with the sequence position and size so we have a sequence uh, id which is a correlation id so the idea of having a correlation id is that all these messages that we are going to send independently should have the same ID bearing that these are all related and position is 0 1 2 so it it has to be formed with some order and the total size the number of messages that we have split is 9 okay then we need to have the message itself so let's form the data itself so here uh, we'll say message is a data so the actual data Let's save this. Let's restart it. Let's see this now. So now you can see all these uh, uh, payload content has been uh, split equally, though individually split uh, messages, messages uh, won't have any meanings. So, but anyways, uh, the mission is accomplished. So we are able to uh, uh, split it. So now uh, the idea is to send uh, these messages into uh, database or uh, uh, VM queue. Let's do that. So let's uh, uh, form uh, async because uh, we need to send it asynchronously and uh, under the asynchronous uh, we will have VM, VM publish and we will give uh, for each So we will choose for each here and we will use this and for each should be as a part of asynchronous. So 
so the payload has to be published into this uh, because uh, this is for uh, each uh, uh, I mean here we have the uh, payload dot uh, uh, messages so that's what we need to use here so here we'll say uh, um, payload dot messages so that's the one that we formed let's close this So now if you double click it, it comes in the function format. So it's working fine. And in publish, uh, we will create a, a VM queue. So we will create a, a edit inline and queue name is going to be uh, messages. So that's it. So what happens here is uh, uh, asynchronously we are uh, receiving the message and splitting them into individual message. So for example, this is the, so this is uh, one message that will be sent and this is second message that will be sent. So we can either store it in a database or we can send it as a VMQ. So it, it's based on the requirements. So in order to demo whether we will be able to uh, have those messages uh, uh, join back properly or not uh, let us uh, do that as well so let's uh, use another uh, data transformation so um, uh, here we are having uh, the payload dot messages dot message is what we need to combine them together so again we will use uh, JSON and let's see Employees, and in order to combine together, we need to say uh, payload dot uh, messages dot uh, uh, dot uh, message, and this is what we need to uh, uh, combine together. And uh, in order to combine, uh, we can uh, say reduce. And we are going to say dollar dollar plus dollar because we have seen uh, the purpose of reduce so it combines all the elements together by uh, concatenation so instead of plus we need to use plus plus so that it concatenates uh, uh, all the individual messages together and uh, let's see what the outcome is So let's restart this. I think we introduced a VMQ and then we need to restart. Let's do that. So it's restarting. It's done and deployed. Let's see that. So now you can see here employees, all the messages are concatenated together as expected. So you may recollect because uh, I'm not going to explain uh, how uh, the reduce function works because you can refer to my previously published videos on how uh, the reduce function works. Uh, so now there is one another thing that uh, we have to see here because this message contains the uh, encoded JSON so that we need to decode it. So now uh, let's say uh, read. Uh, this value uh, has to be understood as uh, application uh, slash JSON. We have seen this as well in the previously published videos. You can please refer if you want to know the intricacies of this meaning. So let's save it and uh, let's run it now. Now after uh, combining those individual messages, you got a beautiful JSON message uh, 
appearing again. So, but uh, this part I am showing only for the demo, but actually this is a part done by the recipient system. So they have to receive all these messages and they have to find out uh, what is the correlation ID for each message and they have to have a mechanism of combining them together uh, with those messages that have same uh, correlation ID. So now that we are able to complete uh, uh, this use case uh, of splitting the uh, inbound payload into equal length into different messages. Uh, now let's instead of this VMQ, I'm going to delete this VMQ and then we are going to introduce uh, a database insert so that we can visually see how these messages are going to appear in the uh, recipient system. So we will use uh, insert database uh, insert. Let's drag and drop and uh, Let's configure my local MySQL database and it's MySQL. Let's configure add Maven dependency here. Automatically it will add and I'm going to use my local server and it's 3306 root root and uh, the database is employee. Let's test connection. Test connection successful. Let's say OK and save it. Now I have created a, a, a table called JSON just for demonstration purpose and we have a, a data. Uh, let's see what's the message. OK. So let's clear this uh, from the message, delete from messages. So I have created uh, this message for demonstration purpose. Let's see here. So we have uh, message ID, position, size and data. So we have a last updated timestamp which is uh, having default data. We don't need to worry about it. So let's fill this message ID, position, size and data. So let's say uh, insert into messages and let's say message id position size data so these are the uh, four fields that we are going to update and values let's say uh, id and uh, position colon size colon data So uh, we have all the details available in the payload. So we need to uh, declare uh, uh, parameters and close curly brace and close this. And we need to furnish all the details one by one. So let's say um, ID is payload dot. Uh, So here we get a message and now we can see under the message we have uh, uh, message ID, position, size and message. And we have uh, next is uh, position, payload dot uh, position. And next is uh, size, let's say payload dot uh, size and um, finally uh, data. So we have data also, let's say payload dot uh, message. So we are going to store all these uh, data into the database and then see uh, if we are convinced. Let's save this. And since we have introduced uh, a database operation, I need to restart. So let me stop this and uh, run again. So this is a drawback of uh, uh, having a working session instead of going through already constructed uh, uh, project because uh, the video gets longer since we are constructing one by one. Sorry about that. So it's deployed. Let's do that. 
and uh, we got the same response but uh, now we should have uh, received some messages here let's go back and then uh, select the messages and you can see here uh, the messages are properly inserted uh, uh, as predicted you can see it's uh, I mean I don't know why the message ID is blank let's go back and see that payload uh, let's see what is this payload dot uh, message ID I think ID both I and D are uh, uppercase let's do that now delete all the content again and we will redo from the beginning and it's restarted let's try this now it's completed let's go back to the database and then see the messages now you can see here uh, the correlation ID is all identical because we are using the mule message ID and the position is incremental so when you find the total uh, count of this message ID it should be equal to 9 only then the recipient message can understand that uh, it received all the messages for example if the size is 9 and there are only 5 messages then it hasn't received and it's in the process of receiving so this is very helpful to identify whether the recipient system received uh, all the messages or not now here this is a split uh, a string that has been inserted into uh, database and then uh, timestamp is updated properly so this proves that uh, we have uh, achieved this integration uh, pattern properly and uh, this is one part and we have one more part uh, this is syntactical uh, splitting of messages uh, literally cutting the string into different pieces and uh, now we are going to see how to logically separate say for example uh, in the payload we have different employees so we are going to split the number of employees into equal part or the desired number of uh, size and then we are going to send it so let's cover that part now so in order to achieve that uh, I'm going to introduce uh, another uh, HTTP listener and let's put it here and let me call this as uh, message sequence uh, logical because instead of uh, blindly cutting uh, the string without meaningful pieces uh, we are going to bring in some meaningful JSON but at the same time uh, we are going to cut short the number of employees available in each message so let's introduce uh, uh, transformation and see here uh, uh, the the payload contains JSON of employees array so uh, what we can do is uh, uh, we need to uh, include core arrays because we are going to use one of the uh, functions of the array module so let's uh, say uh, import star from uh, dw core sorry core arrays so uh, here we are going to say uh, messages and we are going to uh, uh, split this in equal size so what we are going to do is have here we are going to introduce where messages equal to uh, payload dot message let's see what that uh, message is so payload dot employees here so we are going to say divide uh, by um, we are going to say 3 so the divide by under uh, arrays is used to, to uh, split the whole array into a number of uh, sub parts so we are going to divide uh, the whole uh, list into uh, array of uh, 3 employees that's what we are going to do so now as usual we are going to form this message with the sequence position size and message so again we will go with uh, uh, um, here this is messages so let's say messages map 
so let's say data and position now let's form those messages again so message id will be correlation id as we have already seen and now we need to say position and that will be pos that we have we are iterating here and next will be size so size here will be the size of the array so look at this this is the um, a split out size so we need to use this one so use size of uh, messages so this will give uh, uh, i mean like suppose uh, uh, here we have around one two three four five six so it's going to uh, split uh, one with the five employees and finally one with only one so that's the size total six is what we are going to have it here and uh, finally we are going to have uh, uh, the message actual message which is uh, um, say message which will be data so we are done with this so now uh, let's save this and then run this particular listener to see uh, how the output looks like logically so it's restarted now instead of message sequence we are going to say message sequence logical and run it we have some issues here i'm sorry it should be json let's save this it should be restarted now let's try so now you can see here uh, it's uh, it's beautifully split into multiple messages and uh, you can see uh, it we are dividing by 3 so which means uh, uh, this must be one group and this must be one group so let's see the actual message now so we have uh, one set i mean this the total size is 2 because if we divide by 3 it will be two sets one set contain three employees you can see here position zero correlation id it's beautifully formed and second is the same correlation id and we have position number one and uh, uh, size is uh, two because it says uh, two different parts and the content will be the last three employees rahul dravid uh, saina neval and pv sindhu and this is the last part and this will be the first part so now we have uh, two different messages that now we need to see how these messages are going to be written into the database let's get that so we are going to introduce uh, uh, asynchronously and uh, we are going to introduce for each and under for each uh, uh, we need to use uh, payload uh, dot messages because uh, uh, payload dot message messages is what uh, uh, we have got so that we need to use the same array here so payload dot messages and uh, under this uh, for each we are going to do the same insert operation and now why don't we copy that from the so let me go to the configuration xml and then let me copy that whole insert where is that insert here it is so let me copy the whole uh, db insert and let me come here to this uh, uh, for each we have a for each completed here let's uh, do that separately and then we will uh, put this db insert so hopefully we are using the same uh, what is this so hopefully we are using the same uh, um, variables as per the standards so i don't think uh, it will error out let's try that anyway let's go to the console and let's try this now we got uh, no error uh, hopefully the data is written into the database successfully let's investigate that yes you can see here there are two different messages uh, 
return into this with uh, uh, correlation ID. And I think since we are running the same instance, the correlation ID is the same. So let me demonstrate by restarting the app so that we will get the uh, different message ID. And before that, let's see why uh, these are appearing this way as an array list. So you can note here uh, the payload message is uh, uh, a Java array, so which we need to convert it into uh, application slash JSON. So I'm using the same technique of writing the payload message as uh, application slash uh, JSON. And let's save this. Let's wait until restarts. So now let's start it again. And now let's go back to the database and then investigate. And you can see here these last two uh, uh, messages are coming with the clean value. You can see uh, now the difference between this and this is this contains the logical value. You can very much uh, take this as a JSON, iterate the employee and process it. But here this is uh, blindly cut into uh, equal length of characters. But here if you can copy and look at it in uh, here. So you can see it's a it's a, it's a JSON meaningful JSON array, which you can uh, uh, instantly receive it, create a flow, iterate it, and then uh, process these records. And uh, before processing, uh, of course, uh, you will be combining uh, the messages having this uh, uh, identical correlation ID. Here we have a same correlation ID everywhere because. Uh, uh, Oh, no, it's it's different. You can I thought it's the same. So you can see these two are identical uh, correlation ID, and these two are different. And so you can see while the recipient application takes them and then process them, they have to ensure that these two uh, messages having the same and identical correlation ID are related messages. Uh, it could be online order or it could be employees of same department, etc. You can uh, treat in a way uh, the, the requirements are uh, formed. So that concludes our working session of uh, demonstrating and creating and designing the integration design pattern called uh, message sequence. So uh, this, uh, this is a very thrilling and uh, very interesting design pattern. Uh, so uh, I, I hope everyone learns this and then applies this instead of just copying from the description. Uh, you can uh, very well start, maybe you can uh, run this video, pass uh, and you yourself need to do it by hands-on uh, developing this uh, from end to end and achieve this uh, result successfully. Then it's going to give you uh, tons of learning in a short period of time. So hope, hopefully you are also enjoying uh, as much I did. So uh, if you have uh, felt it's useful and then liked it, uh, please hit thumbs up and subscribe my videos. And uh, tomorrow I'll meet you all with yet another exciting design pattern. Thanks for watching. Bye.